All right. Everybody, sorry for the delay there. We'll get started now. Coach, if you want to go ahead and start us off um, with just some opening comments on, um, on the class as a whole. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've done this um, before. This is unusual, signing one player. Um, so, you know, we were very excited about the initial class of the 24 players um, that were actually signed, including some other players. And to add one today, a top 50 player in the country, uh, who's not just a great football player, but a great baseball player too. So we can continue the relationship of having kids play two sports, which we definitely are about. I think that it's great for them. It's great for the university, um, just like, like John Rice and then just like Ely do. So um, you just usually don't find 325 pounders that do it. And we happen to find them. So, um, I'm sure whatever rankings, this is the top 20 class and all the rankings, whatever that means. Uh, most importantly, that we got a great player today. And, you know, it's kind of like the draft, like day one, where there was a first round of just, you know, top players. And we got, you know, we're really excited about our pick. And we obviously need a defensive. And so this fits into the, 14 defensive players that we signed, I believe, 10, which are already here, which is huge. You know, so they, they're already training, they're going to have spring ball, um, you know, to create immediate competition at those spots. And that's a lot of players, 14 uh, plus some quality walk-ons, and they are all defensive linemen and DBs. So that, that'll be an awesome for spring and for our own current players to be motivated to know there's really great players coming in to take their spots. And if we're going to be a national program, you know, that's what we've got to do. Great competition that, that great players are backed up by great players. And, um, and they got to play against great players every day in practice. So uh, we're just starting our way to getting there. Um, I think that there were, you know, some of you may say, well, there's only six Mississippi players. Well, if we're going to recruit Mississippi and sign the best players in Mississippi. And some years it'll be more, some years it'll be less. And this just didn't happen to be a big year. But also, you know, in an initial press conference, told you guys that, you know, we're going to be a national program, compete and be, you know, a top 10, 15, 20 program, go to big bowl games. You know, those programs don't just recruit their state. Those programs recruit nationally. You've seen this one all, all over the place. Kids from Florida, kids from all the way up in the Northeast, you know, Philly, D.C. So, you know, uh, that, that's what we're going to do. And hopefully – I think your year that you perform shows up more in two years down the road, not necessarily that season itself. So I think the way that we played, the excitement, the energy around the program helped, but I think that'll pay off even more next year. And, you know, and hopefully you'll see us get more national top players um, to add to our program. So we become one of those elite programs that we're chasing and that, that we came here to be. All right. Thanks coach. Uh, Nick, you can start us off. Just talking about being a national program, can you talk us through how you found a kid in New Jersey in the middle of a pandemic? Just kind of what was the process of bringing Taiwan here? Well, he's no secret. I think he got offers by everybody in the country. And so we went down to the wire all the way today with some big time great programs learning him out. So um, Coach Partridge did a great job. Um, Marquise helped him as well. But um, you know, obviously great connections up there from Bergen Catholic. I think the last player that we sent out of Bergen Catholic was Brian Cushing. So um, if you can play anything like Cushing, then we'll be in pretty good shape. Paris, you want to go ahead? Lane, when did you learn uh, from Taiwan that he was coming? Uh, when you did, which is very unusual. Um, you know, I usually have a saying, if you're watching – and you don't know, you're not getting him. And uh, we, we had a really good feeling. Um, you know, Partridge, probably 30 minutes before the announcement said 99%, but you know, he, he had not told me the actual words, which usually they do. And everyone else is watching, is watching and, and you're not gonna win. So this was one, one of those unusual cases, but he's kind of a quiet kid to himself. So every once in a while this happens. Well, that was kind of what we had read and seen, I guess, or what I had read and seen. So when you're you're watching an announcement like that and you don't know, or 
Are you pacing? Are you sitting? Do you go to the kitchen? I mean, what, what do you do during that time? Well, I actually couldn't find it on the computer and I thought it was a little bit later. Um, and so I actually uh, was finishing up yoga and came out of it and I called Cartridge saying, hey, where, I can't find this thing. He goes, oh, he's already coming. So um, I guess it was good luck, but I didn't actually see it. Ben, you can go. Lane, you already kind of touched on this, but um, the collaborative effort with baseball, with two-way guys, you've done it for now over a year. What's that like in the relationship with the baseball staff? Well, it's awesome to have a top whatever five program. I think we're number one in the country before COVID. Um, to have, and it's one thing to have a great baseball program that wins. It's another thing to have one that wins and wins with style yeah, and has a, a crowd like the way they do at baseball games that, you know, these kids don't know about it around the entire country. And they know about the outfield deal, everything. So, um, you know, the baseball staff was unbelievable in, in the recruitment. And that's unusual because a lot of times you see go as a football player and play some baseball. But um, Coach and, and the, his assistants did an unbelievable job. And um, I got on our assistants because I, I think they, they did a better job than ours did at times. So um, it, it was a group effort, though. You know, we had Zooms with every. I think one of the Zooms with them, we had like 28 people on it. So um, a lot of credit to a lot of people. Next is Neil. Hey, Lane, I was wondering if uh, with some of the spots that you still have left in this class, if you kind of had a, a, an idea of which way you were going to move in terms of the, the transfer portal, the grad transfer portal, that kind of thing. Well, I think you're going to see two waves. The initial wave that already happened, um, we weathered that pretty well ourselves with our own players. Um, and that's the, you know, right after the season or right towards the end of the season where we lost a couple, but for the most part, not, not lose, you know, productive players um, on paper. So uh, I think you, there'll be another wave after spring, you know, around the country. And also since the rule really wasn't passed, it's just assumed to be that I think there are some kids around the country that were like, okay, they probably would have left, but they want to wait and see to make sure that it's passed. And, there's also the question, is the SEC rule going to pass as well? So will you not be able to just transfer? Will you be able to interconference transfer um, one time for free? So I think you're going to see kids wait. And um, that's why we have held a few spots um, because it would be great. It's like free agency, you know, it'd be, especially on defense. It would be great to have a couple of premier players that are last couple spots, um, you know, to get us to where we want to be on defense. You basically just answered my follow-up question, but I was going to ask, are there specific positions that right now when you look at your roster, you're like, okay, we're a little deficient there, and you want to address that? We want to, you know, when you're down to, you know, a couple spots, you want to get great players. And so I think it will be, I would like them to be defensive players, um, you know, especially, you know, some defensive line. And, but, you know, we'll see, and we'll take – you know, there, there's a great player and we have other guys in that position. We're going to take him because that's what, that's what big time programs do. Next is Yancey. Coach, uh, the last month of Tyrone's recruitment, you did not have a defensive line coach in place. How were you able to overcome that? Well, I think Coach Partridge did an amazing job with them. You know, we, we talk to kids all the time in recruiting. You know, don't pick places for your position coach. We see that all the time. They pick up because of position coach, and they leave, the position coach leaves, and they want to transfer. You know, you got to pick a place for the university, someone that you, even if coaches move, you still want to go to. Um, I think a lot of times they do the head coach too, you know. But, um, you know, Marquis did a great job recruiting him throughout the process with um, Coach Partridge. and. Um, so um, they did a really good job. And I think this kid was more than who's the D-line coach, you know, because this is a two-sport athlete with a lot of play. That's a very, very smart, intelligent kid, too, you know, that was big on education as well. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Next is John. There we go. Finally got it. How's it going, Lane? Um, good. I know you still have a couple spots still open, but based on kind of where you guys were heading into, you know, getting this class together, 
Would you say the class that you put together was better than what you expected it to be? Or, and how would you just overall kind of rate that uh, this class? Well, I think it's a lot better than what I would have expected it to be with the circumstances. You know, in normal circumstances, I think it, it would have been even a better class because I think we have great game day environment, great fans, which these kids didn't get to come see. Um, we've got great assistant coaches, university, which a lot of them didn't get to see. So it's like a virtual tour and didn't get to meet. So I think we had even a better class in normal circumstances, but the circumstances being so crazy of, you know, not being able to go visit them, them not coming to games. I thought our assistant coaches did an amazing job, you know, to sign a class, a top 20 class without that, because it's, it's easy if you're a, a top 10 program, you know, it, that's really where the kids should go because they don't get a chance to come to other campuses, meet the coaches, and go with the safe bet. You know, go to you know your Alabama, your Clemson's, Ohio State's, whatever it is. So, so I just think our guys did a great job under extremely hard circumstances. Next is David. Lane, just to follow up to something you were asked previously, but I know he hasn't been here long, but can you tell us a little bit about the role Randall Joyner might have played in the recruitment of Taiwan Malone? Yeah, it was obviously really late. Um, you know, we got to ask Taiwan that more. Um, I know that, that they did talk. He was on one of the Zooms at the end uh, when we were with him and his family. So um, I, don't, I don't know. You have to ask him. But um, what we know of Randall is he is a phenomenal recruiter. We've heard that from a number of people, and we researched these guys all the way back to when he was the GA for Urban Meyer and talking to Urban about him. So um, he said he was one of his favorite guys he's ever had. So we're excited to add him as a coach and a recruiter. Can you also comment on Coleman Hutzler and John David Baker as well as new staff additions? Yeah, I think that, you know, Coleman brings us SEC, and especially special teams coordinator, so he knows the team, he knows how they play, and and has recruited in the SEC, which is which is huge, um, you know. And then, you know, <clears throat> we got with John. We got a tight end coach that um, people rave about his overall knowledge. Eventually, be a coordinator and, and possibly a head coach someday. So, um, just really thought in the interview process that he really knew a lot of football. And it, you know, it was a bright whatever thirty year old um, coaching at USC that. Um, knows a lot of knows a lot about offense and not just you know the air raid offense. Next is Parrish. Lane, can you tell us what you're hearing uh, about spring football? I mean, what do, do you think it's going to happen? Uh, I do. Um, I'm operating as that, and so um, I don't have our dates in front of us. Um, but you know, we we do we are planning on having it. All right, any other questions for Coach? All right, guys, thanks. Have a great week.